Hello, welcome to the Dixon Gallery and Gardens. My name is Bill Branch. I am a docent here. Uh, today, in this video, we're going to be talking about the current traveling exhibit at the Dixon. It is called Illuminating the Word, the St. John's Bible. We will be focusing on one particular item in this exhibit, in this video, but I do want to give you some background about the St. John's Bible, how it came to be, where it came from, and uh, how it was made. This touring exhibit uh, it, it features a handwritten manuscript of the Bible. This Bible belongs to the St. John's Abbey, which is in Collegeville, Minnesota. It's about two hours away from Minneapolis, St. Paul. The year 2000 was coming upon us, and the monks at that abbey wanted to create uh, something lasting that would commemorate the year 2000. There is a gentleman by the name of Donald Jackson who is from Wales. He is a famous calligrapher. He had the idea that uh, he came to this abbey and presented them with, they would create a handwritten copy of the Bible the way it was done 500 years ago in monasteries. And so the project took off. It took many years to complete. It took many people. Um, it hadn't been done, like I said, in 500 years. The invention of the printing press sort of did away with handwritten copies of the Bible. But back in medieval times, a handwritten Bible was a very, very special thing. The Dixon is very lucky to have examples of what's called the St. John's Bible, which was made in the exact same methods as medieval times. The four things that they wanted for their copy of the Bible to have would be quality, and it would be longevity, and it would deal with being a welcoming thing, and it would talk about forward thinking. And so as I talk about this particular page of the St. John's Bible, I will bring up some of those topics that were included in this. Many scholars, monks, and artists collaborated to create the things that you will see in this exhibit. I believe the Bible, the St. John's Bible has 160 what are called illuminations. They are they're not illustrations, they are visual aids to help the reader of the Bible understand what is going on in the written text. So today I am going to focus on this particular page, which is the called frontispiece, which is a fancy word for opening page of the Gospel of Matthew. Um, when you are finished with the Old Testament in the Bible, you would turn the page and you would start with the New Testament. Of course, you would want something pretty impressive to catch the viewer's eye as you changed from Old Testament to New Testament. The beginning of the New Testament has the four Gospels, Good News of Christ, Gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew is the first Gospel. This is what they created. Like I said, many people were involved in creating this, so I'm going to help point out some things that they included in this illumination. I'm going to have you look at it, pause for a minute, just look and see what you might see or what might come to your mind as you see this image. The first thing that you might have seen, if you know something about the Hebrew faith, the Jewish faith, this is a menorah which is a seven-branched candlestick. Um, some, of some, some of you might have seen something that looks like a tree, which would have been a correct answer too, because this shows a family tree, or the tree of life. 
the writer of the Gospel of Matthew wrote to a particular audience, and that would have been Jewish people, who weren't quite convinced that Jesus, the Christ, was the Messiah that they had always looked for. So this writer of this Gospel, one of his main intents in writing was to show them Jesus's heritage uh, and that who he came from and who he came to be. And that was through genealogy. Some of you out there may be doing your own genealogy and that is what this image represents. The menorah is lit at the top. You'll notice that it's very shiny. This is 24 karat gold leaf. Uh, I mentioned to you that the monks of the Abbey wanted quality. 24 karat gold leaf is at the top, would represent the candles that are lit in the menorah. I also mentioned that they wanted their, this St. John's Bible to be welcoming. Very closely, if you look at those flames of the menorah, you will also see tiny images which are picked up from the faith of Islam. They are geometrical designs and they are in the gold leaf. At the bottom of the menorah, or the family tree down here, written in Hebrew, is the genealogy of Jesus the Christ. At the very bottom is the father of the Hebrew faith, Abraham. His name is written right there. It's written in English. It's also written in Hebrew. Abraham had two wives. His first wife, or his second wife over here, is Sarah. Her name is written in English and it's written in Hebrew. Hagar, his other wife, is written here in Hebrew and at the bottom it is written in Arabic, which shows that from her, from, from Hagar, the Islamic faith was created. When you look at the branches of the, of the menorah, you will see swirling concentric circles. These sort of represent the mandala, which is, which is central to Hindu faith, Native American faith, but you see these swirling circles going on around in the background. And on some of the branches of the candelabra, you will see the double helix of the DNA molecule. I told you that they wanted it to be forward thinking. They wanted to see that their Bible that they created, if it was looked at by people say 500 years from now, what were those people about? What were they thinking about? Well, they had discovered that we're all made from DNA. And this would represent Jesus Christ's DNA in, in, the, in the molecule. Um, the circles swirl, and um, as you come up the tree, you will see the name of David, who's a very important ancestor of Jesus Christ. His name is written there. When you get up at the very top, you will see Joseph, Jesus' earth, earthly father, and his mother, Mary. And then it says Jesus Christ at the very top to represent their child, Christ, the Messiah. One thing that um, the monks wanted, uh, it, like I said, it was quality in this Bible. Gold, I talked about. Also, the painstakingly um, creating of these images with colors that were made, handmade with pigments that were ground and stirred and then created so that you could create the beautiful colors and also ink from ancient, ancient um, soot and black ink that was used to create the words. So these are, you will see that there are multi layers of symbolism within this one illumination. I hope that my explanation engages you and helps you understand a little bit more about how this Bible was made, why it was made, I hope that you will come to the Dixon, see Illuminating the Word. The galleries are filled with many of these that you've come to look at. The exhibit will be on view here at the Dixon until January the 10th. So please come during the holiday season and see this wonderful exhibit.
Thank you.